I'm Dr. Samantha Tinsay, Municipal Health Officer of Bantayan, Cebu, and my presentation is entitled Best Practices in Paradise, HIV and TB Situation in Bantayan Island, Cebu. Bantayan Island is located in the northernmost tip of Cebu province, which is in the Visayan region in the middle of the Philippines. Bantayan Island is a beautiful island paradise filled with white sand beaches, crystal clear blue waters, and the best seafood that you can imagine. And this is the place I've been calling home for the past three years. As you can imagine, transportation can be rough, where we get around mostly on these boats called pump boats or catamarans. There are some realities in paradise, however and HIV is one of them. The HIV situation in the Philippines is like so. In the past decade, the Philippines has gained notoriety as a country with the fastest growing HIV epidemic in the Western Pacific region. While the overall trends of HIV and AIDS deaths are declining globally, an increase in new cases was reported to the HIV AIDS and ART registry of the Philippines. And between 2012 to 2023, there was a 418% increase in incidence of HIV. This uh, chart that was seen in a study last year shows the declining trend of HIV globally in green. And in red, you can see the increase um, incidence of HIV infections in the Philippines with a 418% noted increase. This study, um, these charts were seen by, um, were done by UNAIDS HIV estimates. And you can see there is a significant increase in incidence of HIV. And as you can see here, Cebu City, and Cebu in particular, has a higher rate of people who inject drugs. And that is one of the leading causes of HIV here in Cebu province. So there is an information gap. So amid a growing epidemic of HIV AIDS in the Philippines, the percentage of Filipino youth, however, who are aware of HIV or AIDS has declined to its lowest level since 1994. As you can see in the chart on the right side, the top right side, the um, awareness of the youth has gone down from 95% all the way down to 75%. So some 35% of young people also did not believe that a person can reduce the risk of getting HIV infection by using a condom during sex. Contrary to the evidence that shows that consistent condom use is very effective against HIV transmission. So this was done in a local study here in the Philippines and the um, awareness of the youth and their knowledge of HIV and AIDS transmission was not as high as those in other countries. So all in all, only 19% or one in five Filipino youth has comprehensive knowledge of HIV and its transmission. So how do we bridge this information gap? Or what do we do? Here are some things that we should do. One is to reach the unreached, to go to the places where usually healthcare workers don't go. So these pictures show um, our healthcare workers, our nurses, barangay health workers, and our midwives and other staff going by pump boat to other islets within Bantayan Archipelago. So Bantayan has the sixth highest cases in Cebu province, um, trailing behind places like Liloan, Minglanilia, Naga, Danao, and Consolacion, which are all surrounding Cebu City and Mandawe City, which are the tri-cities in Cebu province. Bantayan um, is the only one that's remote, but surprisingly has a lot of cases, probably because we have a high number of tourists in the island and also a lot of people who come and go, so transmission can be rampant. This is just a tip of the iceberg, however, as we have only started screening in the past two years. So HIV in Bantayan, Cebu. So prior to 2022, HIV testing in Bantayan was limited, first of all, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and second of all, due to the stigma in the community, um, because the Catholic Church is such a big cultural heritage in Bantayan Island, um, 
a lot of these testings, talking about sex, all of this is very taboo. And HIV testing only started when I started working in Bantayan um, around uh, early. So I started in November 2021 and we started testing regularly in January 2022. So it became a routine practice for the RHU to screen all pregnant mothers, persons deprived of liberty or those in the jail, and patients in the National Tuberculosis Program. So we do like a one-stop approach um, for our TB patients as well. And we go inside the jails and test those who are in prison. And of obviously pregnant mothers before they become admitted in our birthing home. This unfortunately was not a practice before and it only started when I started working in Bandayan. So from 2023 to 2024, um, Bantayan recorded 12 new HIV cases, and unfortunately, out of those 12, two died due to complications of AIDS. So these, um, um, one of them was only 22 years old, and he died from CMV. He had AIDS, first of all. He had complications of blindness from CMV retinitis and some other um, issues such as pulmonary TB. He was also co-infected with syphilis. And then the other um, young man who was um, in his late 30s also succumbed to AIDS and he died of complications as well. And unfortunately, these two were from our rural or further out islet barangays, which is about one to two hours away from Bantayan proper. So how do we bridge this information gap? So first of all, we go in and we educate and empower our island's youth. So, and you can see in these pictures here, our rural health nurses were going in there to the schools, high schools, junior high schools, and even universities and educating the youth on what HIV is, what are STIs, what is HIV transmission, and how we can go about preventing and avoiding it. So again, knowledge is power. And by us doing this, by getting involved with the youth, it shows that um, the youth are important and that they are seen and that they should also have the knowledge available to them. So another thing that we started doing is breaking the stigma in our island community by having um, local celebrities, such as a local beauty pageant winner, um, engage in testing services. So we incorporated this with, um, Visayas, uh, with the Vicente Soto Memorial Medical Center or the government um, tertiary hospital in Cebu City, where we did a mass screening of about 300 people and provided free ART, free condoms, and free prep to those who needed it the most. So we engaged the local community and we also had local celebrities and politicians get involved to break the stigma of testing in our local community. As you can see, we have our beautiful um, Bantayan and um, LGBTQA plus community members here with their free prep and condoms. So this was a very successful event. Um, and hopefully we can have many more of this as well. Another thing that we regularly do now is the screening and advocating for the disenfranchised, especially those in the district jail. So we do regular or quarterly HIV and tuberculosis screening in the jails, as well as their checkups because just because somebody made a mistake doesn't mean they don't deserve checkups like everyone else. So they deserve the same kind of treatment as the general population. And I'm just so happy to say that no one has tested positive for HIV during the screenings. But for tuberculosis, yes, and they've started their treatments for that as well. Another thing that we're doing is mobilizing government agencies to action. As a municipal health officer, as a government employee of Bantayan Island, it was my responsibility to get not only the mayor, but also the local politicians, barangay captains, the Department of Education, and also other stakeholders involved in this fight against AIDS. So as you can see in these pictures, this is our regular local AIDS council meeting where we discuss our plans for the youth, our plans for the future and our projects for our HIV and AIDS um, awareness, advocacies, and dealing with um, community members as well. First of all, to advocate for those who are living with HIV 
Second of all, to break the stigma. And third of all, to make it a routine, um, everyday uh, sort of laboratory test that people aren't scared to do. So this is how we mobilize government. So in the future, hopefully this can be cascaded down to the rest of the province. So how do we find the missing cases? So we've only seen the 12 HIV cases. Where are the other ones? How do we connect all of this together? So imagine us at one in the morning going on this dark pump boat ride, all because of case finding. So we were here going, um, doing our package of TB, HIV, um, case finding in one of the remote islets an hour and a half away from Bantayan proper. So this is how we incorporate a one-stop shop approach. So this is our approach to both tuberculosis and to HIV screening. So for TB, we use the Introducing New Tools project as you can see here, the INTP. So the INTP is comprised of three um, major tools. We have the Ultra Portable X-ray by Fujifilm X-Air. We have the CAD4 TB, which is the Artificial Intelligence by Delft, Delft Imaging. And then we have the Mole Bio TrueNAT or the RT-PCR for the sputum samples as well. So this project started in September 2022 through um, partnership with the Stop TB Partnership and FHI 360 and USAID. So this was our pilot back in September. They called us. We literally had like a few days to decide. And I said, you know what? I don't care if it's typhoon season. We're going to go for this because we never know when we're going to have this type of technology in our hands in a rural area. And now how, how's it going? So this was our last um, major case finding. Um, back in May 2024, so this was around a month and a half ago. So as you can see here, we incorporate the INTP um, tools here, but we acquired these tools through different ways. So in the first part, when we had the pilot with USAID, um, it was them who provided the tools. But this second time around, so we acquired the TrueNAT, the X-Air, and then the Delft CAD4 TB in November 2023 through letters to the Department of Health since it was the the X-ray was donated to them and the AI as well, and also through um, thank you gets um, gets healthcare, and also through Mobio by providing the machines. And as you can see here, we do a one-stop shop approach where we do um, diagnosis, we do treatment right on the spot as well as HIV testing and we bundle it with other services such as our pap smear, our dental services, and our immunization program. So it's all in one um, as well as free medicines and um, data encoding for our local health, uh, local public insurance. So this is how we're going now. When we go into communities, we go in with all hands on deck, full force, complete services. So let's just go back to the data, okay? So I just wanted to show how accelerated our case finding has been using the new tools. So unfortunately, back in 2021, we had a very dismal case finding because of COVID. We had very strict restrictions here in the Philippines. And in 2022, when we had the INTP project come in in September and October, so we only had this for about a month and a half, it accelerated our case finding. As you can see here, we had a total of 2,506 um, presumptive TB cases x-rayed. And out of those, 1,774 were from the ultra portable. But let's just fast forward um, to 2023. So we only had the ultra portable and the rest of the tools only for one month. So from January to um, October 2023, we were just going using regular traditional x-rays. And then in November and December 2023, we were able to um, get back the new tools. So we were able to screen 1,001 more patients. So you can see it's an acceleration. Whereas here in 2024, you can see a sharp increase in our presumptive TB cases because we were able to use the tools from the get-go. Unfortunately, we had to return the ultra-portable x-ray 
um, in the beginning of June because we had to share it with other municipalities. So I was just so fortunate to be able to use it um, in our municipality for around seven months. So now we're back to using traditional. Okay. So for presumptive TB cases, the Department of Health gave us a target of 1,544, and we've hit, exceeded that over and above and beyond. So for TB case detection, again, we didn't do so well in 2021 because of the restrictions. 2022, um, we had 458 new cases, and I was a bit expecting that because we weren't really testing for a while, and so the cases were piling up with a 96% case detection rate. In 2023, I'm not so happy with our case detection rate because it's only at 89%. We weren't able to accelerate as much because of the tools were only given at the end of the year, but it's okay because we still found 341 cases. And then now I'm so happy to say it's not even, we're halfway through the year, we've already found 63% of our cases with a case detection of 60, 63% with 242 cases. So I'm very happy about that. And hopefully it accelerates and we can hit our target of 386 cases or possibly more um, towards the end of the year. So how do we go about this um, case finding? How do we find missing cases? Not only do we use INTP, but we also leverage technology in rural islands. So as you can see here on the left side, it's my staff putting our Starlink up on a basketball court. The reason why we have to use the internet is because um, we are the only municipality, we were the first ones in Cebu province to use electronic health records that does direct billing to our, um, our social insurance system called PhilHealth. And that money is able to come back to us and we can um, be able to get better give better healthcare services to our constituents. So this island, as you see here, we all have laptops. This is in the middle of nowhere. It's actually in between two different provinces, but it's still part of Bantayan Island. It's about two and a half hours away from the main island. So next, we also had some logistical issues, but we kept going. So this, unfortunately for us, we are slaves to the high tide. What does that mean? As you can see here, if it's low tide, um, we have to walk towards the boats. Because if the tide is too low, the boats cannot go across to the other islets. And as you can see here, um, we were lugging around, um, I guess this is worth like 9 or 10 million pesos, Philippine pesos worth of supplies around the island. So we had to walk maybe around... A, one and a half kilometers around to look for the portion of the island with the highest tide so we can go back home. And unfortunately for us, since we were running late because we had so many consultations, um, we almost capsized. <laughs> we're all laughing here because we thought, oh, this is so fun, this is, we're getting wet. But then like after an hour of this, we were so scared and we wanted to go home. And there was already a search and rescue team <laughs> by the mayor looking for us. You know what? Again, when USAID says we want to do this project in the middle of typhoon season, you don't say no. You just go for it and pray and see <laughs> what's going to happen. And I have no regrets. Because as you can see here, our case notification rate in 2022 skyrocketed to 517. In 2023, not bad. I mean, it's 388.57, which is above the national baseline. And currently, as of June 30th, we're at 275 for a TB case notification. And hopefully, we can get over and above the 2023 um, CNR. So again, we bridge this information gap with service delivery. Because back then, when before my time, this was not a routine thing. Uh, maybe because now... Because now we have like younger staff who are willing to go out in the field. To be honest, I like field work more than sitting in an office. So for me, this is something that I love. This is my passion. And it also became the passion of some of my staff. We were able to hire new and younger staff. And as you can see here, I just want to show respect for, I always do this in all the presentations. 
just want to show love and respect to the lady sitting on my um, left, or it depends where you're seeing it, um, in the block right there in the boat on the left side. Um, that's Ma'am Lalane, and she is instrumental to our HIV and TB program as our chief med tech. Unfortunately, she passed away um, soon after the INTP project. But I just want to show lots of respect for her because without her wanting to push through with these projects, none of this would be possible. Where we are now is not possible without her. So I just wanted to acknowledge her and just remember her throughout this time. So again, service delivery is great, but you also have a heart, have to have a heart when you're doing it. When we serve, we also serve those who are disenfranchised, people in jails, people who are bedridden. As you can see here on the right, this was a patient with POTS disease or TB of the bone who had, we had to debride and go to her house. We had to gain the trust of the community to find the missing cases. So for a TB success rate, um, fortunately, we're above 90% since um, the beginning. So I'm very happy about that and I'm praying that we hit 98, 99%, hopefully 100% in 2024. So when we find missing cases, we're not just looking at numbers here, we're also saving lives. We're saving one life, one barangay, one city, one country at a time. And this is my favorite patient. I always talk about him because I'm just so proud of where he's come from. So this is a case of Joseph. Again, this is taken with his consent. Joseph is now 27 years old and this photo on the left was taken when he was around 24, 25 years old. He was bedridden, he was covered in sores. To be honest, he was just waiting to die. But because of our local barangay health workers who dedicated their lives to serving the community, we were able to home visit him and do the tests by the bedside. And then we found out, unfortunately, that he had POTS disease or TB of the bone. But we were able to get him to a tertiary hospital at Vicente Soto. We were able to link him up with a nutritionist, a care team. And so this is him now on the right. This picture was taken, I think, um, just a couple months ago. Now he, is, he can walk again. He can swim. He can fish with his father again. He can have life again and he just told me he has a girlfriend now so i'm very happy for him in tagalog we say sana all or or how do you explain that i wish it all for everyone so i'm really happy um for him and again when we find the missing cases we are dealing with human lives we are dealing with real people real stories and this is what you should capture in your heart today we're not just thinking about numbers, 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 accomplishments, data. We are looking at individual stories, individual lives. And this is why what we do is important. I would like to thank our partners, the Stop TV Partnership, USAID, FHI 360, Fujifilm, Dolph Imaging Mobile, Gets Healthcare, Municipality Bantayan, the Department of Health, and the Bantayan Rural Health Unit. Madamo nga salamat sa inyong tanan. Um, you can scan this QR code for our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Bantayan Health. My name is Dr. Samantha Tinse. You can reach me at samanthatinse at gmail.com. And thank you so much for allowing this opportunity to share my story. Thank you.